اشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب What's the ruling that you can call onto the Prophet in his grave after Allah Alaihi Wasallam, after he died? Evidence we need from it. Whether it's wajib, mubah, mustahab. He won't bring makru because he doesn't believe it's makru. He won't bring it as haram because we wouldn't have this debate if it was haram. And so those three can only bring wajib, mubah, and what? And uh, mandub. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana in alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your last sentence, you said, we won't be having this debate if this was haram. If this issue was just haram, and you believe this issue is shirk and kufr, polytheism and disbelief, that in effect would mean you would accept someone declaring something which is mujma ali, agreed upon, which is upon which there is consensus as being simply as haram. If someone calls disbelief Haram and not kufr. Is he a kafir for doing so? Yes or no? If someone declares disbelief as just being haram and not kufr, does he become a kafir? No. If he does this sarahatan. Say that one more time. Repeat the question and then hear the question properly. If someone declares disbelief as not being kufr but just haram, does he become a kafir for doing does he become a kafir? If someone says, uh, if someone states that to believe in a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not kufr, just haram. By saying so, does he become a kafir? Every kufr is haram. Every kufr is haram. But when you said, if we believed it was haram, we would not be having this debate. Just haram or kufr as well? When I was telling that I meant the haram without kufr. Without kufr, yeah. exactly. So now you've gone lower to declaring it not, uh, be, it being acceptable to declaring it haram. Is it acceptable if someone says, Tawassul or Istighatha bin Nabi Ali Salatu is just, is just haram. Is just haram and says it is not kufr. Is this acceptable, yes or no? Well, I don't get the question. You don't understand the question? No. The question, I'll repeat for the third time, is according to you, istighatha with the Prophet وسلم, is kufr and shirk. After his death. Yes, kufr and shirk after his, after his death. But here on the clause, you haven't placed that. Moderator, please look at clause number seven. The second debater will begin by presenting his evidences in an attempt to prove that istighatha of the Prophet وسلم, is the fard uh, wajib. Mustahab and Mubah. And then, eight, the first debater will respond by rejecting the evidence is brought forth by the second. The microphone will then return back to the second. There's no clause of death. You and I both agreed that the istighatha was going to be after his passing death. Wait, you're not allowed to talk. I'm pointing this out. You can answer in your own time. What I'm saying to you, I'll repeat again. If istighatha is kufr akbar, istighatha through Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa un unrestrictedly, unrestrictedly, as is in the clause, and after he's passed away, with restriction, if it is kufr akbar, like worshiping, worshiping an idol, and someone says, it is not kufr, it is just haram, is he a kafir for saying so? Yes or no? Wallahi, I'll be honest, Wallahi, I don't understand the question. I'll repeat again. Look. I'll simplify. You guys understand the question? No. You, don't, uh, you don't understand the question. If so, there's a... Did he do outside the question? I'm trying to. Okay. If there's an idol worshipper, and someone says... Juan, please. I'll simplify it for you. Someone worships an idol. Is he a kafir? Yes. Someone, a Muslim comes along and says, it's not kufr, it's just haram. Does he become a kafir for saying that? Uh, this is a part of the conditions. Why are you asking the audience? I don't want an answer from them. They cannot. And why are you breaking the conditions? Why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you, 
audience members. Carry on, please. Uh, Ustad Abdul Rahman also asked the audience. I'm not expecting uh, uh, answers. It's uh, I don't know why that. But I think you should take that brother out the room. Hey, he's got the one no. warning. He's got one warning. Just, just as speakers, you do not resort to answer, asking the audience members question. Both of you, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, man. Let's continue, please. Just stop it. Ustad Abdul Rahman. If there is an idol worshiper, he worships an idol. A Muslim comes along and says, it is not shirk, it is not kufr, it is only haram. That Muslim, does he commit kufr by saying so? I just said here, shirk is haram. So that Muslim who says it is just haram, so but not kufr. What does he mean by haram? Not kufr. He believes it's not kufr. Yeah. Then he's, he's, he's wrong in saying so, yes. Is he a kafir for saying so? General ruling or him specifically? That person, give me hukm aam. Is he kafir? The action, the action, yes. The person is commits kufr for doing so. No, I'm not placing on the person, I said the action. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to press the question too much. That's not my style. I only repeated myself so you can understand the